why are you so chummy with this pedo but you were spitting facts about Jeffrey Epstein mm. <laughs> been on TV and radio so long I even forget where I'm at these days maybe I'm gonna take a Savannah maybe that's what folks want I don't, I don't say there's a threat I, I just then I will bother people anymore yeah i'll just be gone i am the highest version of myself i'm not i'm not i'm the highest version of myself i am i know i am that i am hey everybody welcome to another episode of the godspeed podcast i am your host joe guy you having uh problems over there and i'm danny it's everything a little bit of an operator error there at first, buddy. You got to be smarter than the object you're working with. Uh, uh, I who, guess. Who made these things? They're challenging. Somebody that wants to poison your body, buddy. Have I ever shown you the parasite under a micro microscope? Yep. I remember that episode. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Hi. Mm -hmm. My dog. There he is. There he is. It's a big guns. He's two years old. He's a he grows up so fast. Teenager. Yeah, he's a pretty good dog though. Yeah. He gives me no fuss. He'll start calming down here pretty soon. He will calm down. Yeah. Uh, usually by about three, they start to like mellow out a little bit. Dude, he's already mellow. Just wait. <clears throat> Just wait. All right. My dog sleeping uh, on the couch. She over there just, Daisy. Over there just knocked out, bro. Just knocked out. Yeah. She's the best. Anyways. I miss Daisy. Well, just let it start. Okie dokie. Let it let her start sleeping in the bed. What a mistake. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Did you stop already? Nope. <laughs> nope. Well, if it's a mistake, you better stop quickly. No, it's just gonna happen. I've decided no. see uh when i first got gone i was letting him get on the bed but he doesn't get on the bed mm -hmm. every night he sleeps right at the foot of my bed now yeah like not at the foot but like right at my side of the bed he sleeps there every night now mm -hmm. uh, but he doesn't get on the bed he's never been a i want to be on the bed dog daisy sleeps literally at the foot of the bed like stays yeah. down there at the bottom of it at your feet Stinky yep. ass feet. Yeah, that's where she likes to be. <laughs> Dogs are weird. I'm actually glad Gunnar doesn't like getting on the bed because I don't think I'd want him to be sleeping on the bed. Well, my the issue for me is dog fur. Like I, I like I don't oh. like dog fur all over my clothes and when I'm getting ready for work, you know, I'm brushing my teeth or whatever, I fucking take my clothes out of the closet, throw them on the bed. Gotta stop doing that now. Yeah. So and it's, I mean Violet. she's she's four. So like I've never let her sleep on the bed this whole time. And just randomly after my mom went home, I was like, oh, come on, Daisy, It'll be fun. Because she was sleeping in my mom in the spare bedroom with my mom every night. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so it's my mom's fault. Always blame your mom. I was supposed to. Well, I wasn't supposed to. I tried to go there last weekend, but she had to work. So. Yeah, well, she don't stop. Yeah. There's Gus's birthday also so I yeah them to hang out yeah but i'm gonna try to go after i get back from germany so. that'd be cool my mom knows i'm a back from germany as of this video oh when you well hey it. welcome back how was your flights i don't know yet <clears throat> <laughs> hopefully it's not a boeing plane <laughs> uh, well i'm here so i survived <laughs> yes and right <laughs> yes and yeah, right. You're supposed to, no you're supposed to yes and me when we go into those acting, you're supposed to, oh, yeah, it was great, you know. Improv! Oh, yes. Yes, and. <laughs> Wait, what? I was supposed to say yes, and. What the no, fuck no, does no, that mean? No. So, like, a big thing in improv is you never dis. Like, yes, please tell me, Michael Scott. There's nothing greater in improv than a gun. <laughs> what were you going to say? 
I want to know what you're going to say about improv. <laughs> uh, you're supposed to yes and people. Like if I if we're improving, we're going back and forth, and I say something, <clears throat> you know, I was never. Well, I don't know. You know, you're supposed to build. You're so bad at improv, you couldn't come up with one thing. <laughs> Huh? I thought you were gonna be like, do like an improv thing, and I was gonna go back at you with it, and then you just like totally gave up. Because you knowed me, you're supposed to yes and me. You didn't give me a thing. Yes, I did. I said, "How was your flight?" You're like, "I don't know. I haven't been on it yet." Oh, that was before. <laughs> that was before. <laughs> so say it again. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to do this. <laughs> I want to do this. <laughs> well, it's got to come natural, bro. We'll try again later. It's fine. Hey, you, yes, and the... I had a gun <laughs> on the plane. How are you not in jail? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, and I got out of it. <laughs> yes, and doesn't fit, dude. It doesn't flow. Well, you don't. You say yes, and it's it's. You don't say yes and it. That yes and is the thought process. That makes no sense at all. So it's the thought process, right? Let's so so hit me with something, just anything. Well, I went to a baseball game and I I got I got in the stands and the ball came and dude, I caught it. I was there. I saw you. I was eat, dude. I had three hot dogs and I, I was on my third one and I saw that ball. Go right towards you. Did it? Did it hit? Did it hurt when it hit you in the face? Yes, and I was like, <laughs> "Great, it felt good." That is the third time I saw you get hit in the face with something and like it. So I believe that. That's crazy. <laughs> what? Do you remember Jessica? Wham! 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 Jessica. She... Yeah, she used to hit you in the face all the time, and you liked it fuck is jessica <laughs> i mean i guess i would try to put her out of my mind too if i had a girlfriend that hit me a lot but today we're talking <laughs> about alex <laughs> today we're talking about alex jones oh alex jones this guy is a pioneer who is the one person you think of when you think of conspiracy theorist? Joe Guy Mead. Okay, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm a conspiracy analyst. Alex Jones. There you go. There you go. There you go. Um, so I think mm. Alex Jones is a controlled opposition. Mm. And... There's a lot of uh, theories out there that support this uh, this fact. Like, there used to be a comedian named Bill Hicks. You ever heard of him? Yeah, I've seen this. <clears throat> so, people think this comedian who died of pancreatic cancer when he was 32, which most people that die of pancreatic cancer are like 62, mm. older than 62, um, or at least have pancreatic cancer at 62, and not necessarily die of it, but... Uh, yeah, this dude died at 32 of pancreatic cancer, and he uh, resembles uh, Alex Jones quite a bit. Here's a, here's a video. First off, they look identical. When comparing pictures of the two, you'd have to be blind not to see the similarities. I know we all have doppelgangers, but these guys both grew up in the state of Texas and have the same teeth, which is damn near an impossibility, especially when considering all of the other things they have in common. They share the same best friend and production partner, Kevin Booth. Here's a clip of Kevin Booth discussing a little bit about growing up with Bill Hicks as his best friend. I remember 
I used to um, buy a Totino's frozen pizza every single night and like a half a gallon of Bluebell ice cream and go over to Bill's house and that's what we would do. <laughs> Watch soap, pizza and ice cream and, and uh, and just listen to albums and watch the show Soap. Now here's a clip of AJ accidentally slipping up on a show where Kevin Booth was the guest. No, I'm just giving medical facts here on air, buddy. <laughs> All right, let's reset, go to break. <laughs> me, and, me and Kevin are old friends. This is, uh, this is not good here on air. <laughs> me, and, me and Kevin are old friends. This is, uh, this is not good here on air. <laughs> a little bit of gallows humor here straight ahead. I'm Bill Hicks, your host. We'll be right back. I'm Bill Hicks, your host. We'll be right back. You can go to Kevin Booth's website, Sacred Cow Productions, and click on Artist Bios. You'll find that Alex Jones is listed right underneath Bill Hicks. When you click on AJ's bio, it has some interesting things. Let's read the top part here. I became familiar with Alex Jones in the early 90s when he had his first cable access show in Austin, Texas. Alex used to sit in front of a star map, and I had a hard time putting my finger on exactly what it was that Alex was talking about. I remember the very last time Bill Hicks came to Austin Access, spring of 93, we were working on a script called Public Access about a Rush Limbaugh type character who angers a viewer and the viewer came to the station and killed the host on air. Bill's character was an abstract composite of various Access personalities, including Alex. Okay? It's basically saying that Bill Hicks was assuming a role that incorporated Alex Jones. That's pretty funny. Now let's just finish this paragraph. Bill actually watched Alex one day and said, he has magnetism, but I can't tell where he's going. So Bill Hicks and Alex Jones have supposedly been in the same place at the same time. I would say on multiple occasions, if Bill was utilizing Alex's personality for his Rush Limbaugh type character, and there's no photos that exist of the two together. You can find Bill Hicks with Kevin Booth. You can find Alex Jones with Kevin Booth, but not Bill and Alex. It's not incriminating on its own, but it's worth your consideration as we continue. Bill Hicks was working on a story as a journalist with Kevin Booth about the Waco Branch Davidians shortly before he died in 1994. Then in 1996, Alex Jones pops up out of nowhere with himself and Kevin Booth doing the exact same thing. Here's Bill Hicks in 1993 doing a Halloween special for Sacred Cow Productions. Sony's on line one. Sony's on line one. You mean we're out of here? We got the uh, public backing we need? Yeah, yeah that, that must be, be that. Fuck it. We got our big record deal. We're out of here. Thanks. And here's Alex Jones doing a Halloween special in 1997, also for Sacred Cow Productions. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty close. Well, I can assure you, I don't make any money off public access. Coincidence? Maybe. What do you think so far? Eh. Eh, it's a lot. I don't know, man. It's it's obviously it's presented in a way that they want you to absolutely believe what they're saying. And uh, there's some really, really interesting stuff there, especially like the teeth. The teeth was yeah. one thing that was like, oh, that's pretty weird. But I don't think they look exactly like they're pretty close. Obviously, nose job. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. There, there's some. Obviously, they could do some reconstructive stuff and make them look similar but you know i don't know nothing nothing sure. completely uh damning right other than the, the teeth thing was the most thing it was like oh that's that's kind of close and really r really interesting but other than that eh. what about the best friend thing what that, about him saying i'm a, your host bill hex well alex jones is is i don't know he's quick and he's very smart and Obviously, he said something like, I've known him for... Maybe he was uh, making a joke or, you know, that whole thing. Maybe he had seen people comment on, or hypothesize the theory back then. Who knows? Um, I don't know. I don't know. All right, here's a little bit more evidence. 
Isn't it a little weird that on the 10th anniversary of Bill Hicks' death, Alex Jones accepted a Bill Hicks portrait as an award? Tribute to Bill Hicks, February 26, 2004, comm commemorating 10 years since Bill left our world, presented to the Bill Hicks Foundation for Wildlife, Jerry and Lynn Raritan, and the fine folks at Capital City, a.k.a. Lap Stop Comedy Club by Kevin Zoo, Sacred Cow Productions, and artist M.A. Hardy. The following Bill Hicks productions were recorded in this club. Same Man, 1989, Relentless, 1991, Arizona Bay, 1992, and Ranton E. Minor, 1993. This is long before there was even a connection made between Bill and AJ. Before we go any further, I must bring up the fact that according to searchable birthdays of Bill Hicks and Alex Jones, there is a little over a 12-year difference in age with Bill being older. So Alex claims he's 44 now, and Bill would be 56 right now. Let's note that here in 2018, that Alex Jones does not look 44. He doesn't look 44 to me. Also gotta say that people age differently depending on how they treat their bodies and things like that. Um, so again, just want to make a note of it. Um, there's another guy that goes into his age. Do, 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 do. Oh, what do you think about the award thing? <clears throat> Interesting. But they're from the same, you know, they run in the same, same circles. Same exact place. They run same, in the same exact place, same best friend. <laughs> right. You know, worked for the same exact uh, Sacred Cow Productions, doing Hollywood ho Halloween specials. Right. Run in the same circles. Have the same teeth. Yeah. Look very similar, but they're not related. It's interesting. Here's uh, one more thing about the age. It is important for the viewer of this video to know that Bill Hicks is 12 years older than what his character, Alex Jones, claims to be. That being said, let's play a little game. How old is that man? Thirty or forty-two? Thirty-two or forty-four? Thirty-five or forty-seven? Thirty-nine or fifty-one? What you think? Well, I'm trying to compare him to me. My face right there. <laughs> <coughs> I think he looks way older than you. Look at his, look at his crow's feet. I mean, you know, it's all about opinion, I guess. Yeah, I, th I think he was the older number, honestly. There you go. There you go. Some people are like, well, they don't really sound alike. You know what it's like to go to sleep every night knowing you work for a bunch of psychotic killers and you bastards are probably going to end up killing me one day? You know what it's like knowing you've ruined my life? You know what it's like, you sons of bitches? That I gives me carte blanche! I got a cut and I'm drunk! I can do anything I want! I'm tired of your crap! You commit evil, you're part of an evil system, and we're standing up against you! And the Republic is gonna defeat you in the end! I want you to go find a fucking soul! For all the kids you've kidnapped for CPS, all you CPS workers, all you corrupt bureaucrats, all you that have had your way with innocent children over and over again... Take her fucking out! Take her to somewhere that's... What do you think? <clears throat> it's shouting, but you know. I I hear some similarities there. Yeah, I agree. I'm with you. I'm with you. I know a fun fact about Bill Hicks. Uh, he he was a I here I joke guys. I didn't know about Bill Hicks before the episode started. Uh, he was a uh, a pastor or like. Well, hold on. You said that you knew who Bill Hicks was. You just didn't know about the Bill Hicks. Oh, gotcha. Okay. 
<clears throat> so he was like a pastor or like uh he, he was something to do with a preacher or something like that and he used to perform and there's actually recordings of his sermons and he would do that yelling screaming boy that's where he got that whole thing from being a being a pastor yeah yeah because you know you that fan of Bill Hicks? no well i'm a fan of comedy and i you know a lot of people that i'm a fan of are are a fan of bill hicks or were a okay. fan of bill hicks yeah and i've heard them talk about him and i've done a little uh video viewing of his work from back yeah. in the day who's your favorite comedian right now oh it's tough man it constantly changes um well yeah there's always new ones coming out yeah uh i really like tom segura um i really like uh god what's his name shane gillis um i really like uh your buddy there what's his name My buddy? Yeah, your friend. Remember he he talked to you at the one show we went to in San Diego? Oh, <clears throat> fucking guy. I hate that guy. <laughs> Why can't I think of his name? I'm drawing a blank right now. Andrew Schultz. Andrew Schultz. <laughs> He's really funny. Um, I think that might be it currently. Tom Segura, Andrew Schultz. Have you, <clears throat> have you seen... I think his name's Phil Hanley. Yeah. He has like uh dyslexia or something. He does jokes about that. He does a lot of like crowd. I actually I like that those type of comedians because they're quick on their feet when they do like crowd uh interactions crowd, or whatever. Cr- they call it crowd work, yeah. Like yeah, they, like the guy did with you in San yeah. Diego. <clears throat> he didn't do crowd work. I fucking coughed and he fucking he's an asshole. <laughs> So funny. Fuck you, Andrew Schultz. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I'm a person. I was just there to have a nice time. No, we'll wait. We'll wait. <laughs> Here's some more evidence, Dick. It's, it's the, the, the the proof of cover up is the proof of guilt. Yeah, and we just wrote a, you know, this ebook question of, uh, el- of eligibility, question of eligibility, under my name, Jerome Corsi and Mike Zolo, D-U-L-L-O, we lay all this out, just like we did at the press conference. Now, you know, your question, now, you know, your question, and you've got Kerry, you know, who's absolutely in another universe, in an alternate space, and, you know, quantum uh, quagmire, Bill, basically quagmire, Bill. So he had two of his guests call him Bill on air. What you think about that? That's weird. <clears throat> why they would, you know. Yeah. Why would they be prompted yeah. to call him Bill? Unless they knew something. Yeah. I would say, did they know him prior to this? Or was this like, hey, this is their first meeting. I, I want to do a, a story. I need you to come on and give me, you know, what's your thoughts? If it was like their first interaction? Or was this, you know, they had known each other for a while? Then I would say... It would be more likely for them to call him Bill. Or I think they would have they would have had to have known him for a while for them to call him Bill. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> here's a picture of them with the same birthmark or whatever, whatever you would call that. Skin tag. Yeah. Um, I don't and know. Then, I can't. <clears throat> So I, I'm off the. So we're done with all the Bill Hicks comparisons. There's okay. actually I can play a, a one where he talks about how he is Bill Hicks, like he admits it on air, and like you could tell he's yeah he's trying to be funny. My theory is they have to tell us, so he mm. was telling us. Should I play it or no? I mean, if you want for the audience, maybe. Okay, I'll play it for the audience. Here's a a video of him admitting that he's Bill Hicks. Are you rolling? You ready for this? I can't believe it's come to this, but they cornered me. I've got to be honest. It's gotten too big. I've just got to admit it right now. Okay. okay. This is just really hard for me to do. 
I've been doing this so long, it's, it's hard to give up. Give up on the character and go back to who I really was. You got me, okay? Are you happy now? You bastards. Yes, I am Bill Hicks. But to be more accurate, you didn't get it all, did you? You didn't get the full conspiracy. I played the character, Bill Hicks, for 15 years with my accomplice, Kevin Booth. And we fooled you all. The master actor, the master genius. And then I decided to bring forward an even more incredible persona, that of Alex Jones. Well, my, thought, my thoughts are, is, uh, you know, he's, he's trying to just be funny. Yeah, but like I always say, they have to tell us. Yeah, but you could... Yeah, okay. Okay. We'll go along with it right now. Okay. Okay. We'll go along with it. Hey, dude. Big guns. Um, so, here's... So, we're getting into more of why I think he's controlled opposition. Uh, here's a picture of him with an actor. Hmm. Tiger's here's blood. Another, here's another picture of him with an actor. Or is that Tiger's blood? Why are you so chummy with this pedo, but you were spitting facts about Jeffrey Epstein? Mm. Hmm. He probably didn't think all this was going to come out about the actors, and... It's it's a little weird that you're you're chums with with Charlie Sheen. It really is. Cuz he was banging fucking children on the set of his movies back in the 80s. So he's always been a chomo. It wasn't like Charlie Sheen became a chomo later on in life. And you guys saw the episode uh, the uh the chomo episode where we went all through Charlie Sheen. And uh, yeah, here's a here's an Infowars employee. You are right there, right there. You work for Time Warner Cable, right there. Is that who you work for? I work for Alex Jones. Who do you work for? Is, are you you work for President? I work Time for Infowars. I n f o w a r s dot com. It's a website. Infowars dot com. Okay, that's what I'm asking, so I can yes. tell who you work for. So you're so they don't like us filming the work they're doing out here. Is that what you're saying? Infowars brought to you by Time Warner Cable. CNN is brought to you by Time Warner Cable. So when you watch Alex Jones debate Pierce Morgan on CNN, figure it out. They're both being paid by the same company. So why would CNN, Time Warner Cable, have a conspiracy theorist on that was actually a real, I want everybody to know facts about everything, conspiracy theorist? It doesn't make any sense when they censor everybody about everything these days. Mm. So what I think well. what I think he does is I think he tells the truth about a shit ton of stuff. Absolutely. And then he sends. Here, I'll go over my hypothesis about him after. Okay. We have a few more videos. Not that many left. Here is your favorite guy. You fucking love when I play videos by this guy. Ready? Mm hmm. Are you ready? You love him. I contacted him back a few years ago when he was having on a bunch of astronauts giving the official version of the Apollo moon landing. And I, I asked uh, if he'd have me or, or if Joe Rogan was, was big on, uh, on the moon hoax back in the day. Uh, asked him to have me or Joe or someone else on to argue the other point, uh, the other side of the story, because I was a big Alex Jones fan at the time. And uh, I was... It's like, oh, why doesn't he know that this is <laughs> BS? Um, I wanted him to, because because he, he had uh, Buzz Aldrin and uh, Harrison Schmidt and some other, you know, astronauts on, uh, claiming that they'd walked on the moon, and he had no no conspiracy guys on to talk about the opposite viewpoint, 
And so uh, Rob Dew, his producer, contacted me, and he thought it was a great idea, and he said he'd run it by Alex, and he'd get back to me. And uh, they never got back to me, <laughs> and I contacted them several times after that, and they didn't respond to me. Though just a, a week, uh, a week or two after my email, he, he he had Harrison Schmidt on, and he admitted on air. He said, uh, "I've got all these uh, these people contacting me saying that the we haven't been to the moon, and uh, that it's some sort of uh, that I'm covering up the fact that it's some sort of Atlantean conspiracy." I'm covering up the fact that it's it's some Atlantean conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> You sound very credible to me, and I believe you, and I want to believe we went to the moon. <laughs> uh, so, so the word definitely got to him that, you know, that I wanted to, to get on his show or at least have have somebody on the Infowars uh, radio show to give the opposite viewpoint to the moon landing instead of all these astronauts' official NASA versions of the story, um, but. They're not having it <laughs> over at Infowars. You know, they, they've got a controlled thing going on there. Um, Alex is clearly working for Alphabet agencies. Uh, Stratfor, uh, he, he's working for. He has uh, people um, working for him who've directly out of Stratfor, which is a CIA company. He's admitted that 50% uh, of his family works for the CIA. Um, I have a bunch of articles. If you go to uh, AtlanteanConspiracy.com and click on Alex Jones. Uh, I've got a, a, just a bunch of evidence that's been collected over time that he's he's not genuine in what he's doing. Uh, David Icke as well. Um, the, these, you know, Vladimir Lenin said the best way to control the uh, to lead the opposition is to control it. So I mean, if you if you have a conspiratorial hierarchy controlling the human race for thousands of years, you are going to have opposition periodically. And the best way to control that opposition is to lead it. And the best way to lead opposition is to mix truth in with falsehood. And that's what these controlled opposition leaders do. They tell you a bunch of great information. You know, maybe 90% of what they say is spot on. But then there's a 10% which is leading you down the, the garden path towards nowhere. For instance, with David. So that's David Icke the last pitcher and he's in the same category as Alex Jones. Mm. He tells you a bunch of truths and then he gives you this fucking crazy fucking story about just nonsense. So I think they do this to make conspiracy theorists look fucking <coughs> bad shit, crazy. You know what I mean? Right. Like give us truths so we're on the board and then give us some fucking whacked out story so then we believe that because we know the other stuff is true. So why why would you be lying about this? So now we think the government's a bunch of fucking lizards running around fucking, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think the government's evil as shit. Do I think they're fucking lizards that have a fucking control base inside the moon? Come on. Like, I think it's to make conspiracy theorists look nuts is what is what I think Alex Jones does. I think that's what he's there for. Um, what do you think? Uh, I don't know about that. I don't think conspiracy theorists look nuts, even when they're when we're talking about lizard people. I think it's an actual possibility. Um, I think there's a lot of weird shit that we don't really know about on this planet. And, um, you know, the the. The further we progress technology, the more we're learning about our actual planet and where we're from and things, Fine. previous uh, civilizations and things like that. So <clears throat> there is a documentary coming out. It'll be out when this is out and you should go watch it. I haven't watched it. I've seen the trailer for it, but it's by uh, Hibbler Productions. And it's the guy that was on the Michael Jackson episode that was saying, just tell him he's fucking him. That guy with the beard. Yeah. That you thought looked like the guy from Always Sunny. He does bomb documentaries. All his documentaries are fantastic. Hibbler Productions. Uh, said, Stu Peters. You said Hitler, also. Hitler Productions? Hibbler. It's very close. Um, but yeah, saying. all his stuff is fantastic. So go check him out. The only, uh, he does in a couple documentaries what this dude, um, the very first video I played here, on this in this episode where he like somebody says something and then he slows it down and says it again in slow motion mm. i can't stand when they do that it's so annoying but yeah but he so in like one of his documentaries he was doing that mm -hmm. in his first like level 
documentary. Uh, but he, he hasn't done that after that. But, uh, yeah, I can't stand when they slow that shit down. I'm like, why are we... S- I heard it. Right. I heard it. <laughs> but everything some, else... Some people don't get the head. point the first time somebody says something. Yeah, I guess. So, you know. uh, but, yeah, his, his, uh, the documentary is about, like, old world... Episode 13 and episode... Uh, it's about the Tartarian Empire, and it's about, like, the old giant trees and giants and mm. it's the, the 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 trailer looked excellent uh so i would go seek that out i can't remember the name of it i think it's called old Wor- yeah it's called old world order uh so if you have time i go check out that documentary i haven't watched it yet the trailer looked fantastic and i know it's going to talk about a lot of things that we talk about on this show so okay uh, <clears throat> yeah um i don't know if i should play this or not um, you know who Stu Peters is? Mm-mm. So Stu Peters has a, an independent news site where he talks about real shit that's going on. And he literally, he's on Alex Jones' show. The reason why I don't know if I should play this because like, it's like nine minutes long. Mm. And um, he basically, Stu Peters goes into how it's the Zionist Jews doing all this shit. And how if you look at Biden's cabinet, it's all the fucking Zionist Jews in his cabinet. And he literally says to Alex Jones, it's not the regular Jewish people. It's the Zionists. And Alex Jones looks fucking very uncomfortable. And then he changes the subject to it being China and how China's the problem. And like, and if you notice all of Alex Jones, all of his content, it's even 9-11. It wasn't the Zionist Jews when it was Mossad. And where did Jeffrey Epstein come from? Mossad, like he covers for the Zionist Jews constantly. Alex Jones does. Mm. Um, final thing about Alex Jones mm-hmm. and why I'm positive he's controlled that position. I'm listening. There's gonna be there's gonna be bleeps in this video. All right. Uh, cause it will get taken down. Oh, is this the Randy's book video? Randy's book, yes. Yeah. Randy's book indoctrination. Um, yeah. Listen Ugh. to this old timer and try to pay attention without making fun of his voice. No promises. That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be great. No promises. Yes, indeed. Uh, a wonderful private investigator with whom I've done a lot of cases like. Uh, Buffalo, uh, Uvalde, Nashville, Brian Davidson actually got into the Connecticut State files and discovered photographs there that, for example, down a hallway where you're supposed to have the body of uh, Don Hospring, the school principal, and Mary Sherlock, the school psychologist, lying in pools of blood. There are not only no bodies, but there are no pools of blood in another in the classroom where there's supposed to be a stack of little kids' bodies, there's not only no no bodies and no blood, but there are no school desks, no school chairs. All the furniture is shoved up to the side of the wall. In other words, he not only got proof out of the Connecticut State files that it had been a mass murder, but that it wasn't even an operating school. And all that I presented to the United States Supreme Court Sean, I'm just embarrassed and ashamed the way in which our courts have been converted into mechanisms for suppressing skepticism and promoting propaganda. That's what the judicial system in the United States has been reduced to at this point in time. Well, that's the horrifying conclusion that we're all coming to. There is no more justice in the justice system is an oxymoron to even call it that. It's not about justice at all, ever. It's about persecuting and prosecuting. It's about getting convictions. That's where the average attorney general's brain sits and the average prosecuting attorney these days and the average soulless judge in these fixed kangaroo courts. That's all they care about is their version of officialdom. And I have to conclude it's because they're all on the take. Because they have to know. Well, let me ask you. Do you think that these average judges, these that are persecuting and prosecuting people like you and Helbig and Alex Jones, do you think they know the truth and they're just that overtly evil? Or, more likely, 
do they believe officialdom? Because, you know, a lot of the population does. A lot of the population believes Alex Jones is a bad guy who lied about Sandy Hook. When you and I both know, he never had reason to lie about Sandy Hook. He just wanted to explore what happened that day, like an investigative journalist ought to do. Well, Sean, uh, you presented at this junction incompetence, ignorance, even deliberate ignorance versus corruption, deliberate violations of protocols, including for summary judgment. I can guarantee you my case documents in spades. And it's also true of the other cases that have been brought before courts where none of them have been decided on their merits. Violations of procedures, protocols, and statutes for the conducting of these proceedings that were repeatedly and egregiously violated by the courts. So I think we're stuck that it's inescapable that one or the other, or some would suggest both are the case, except presumably if they were in the know, it would be that much more serious when they're abusing the judicial process. So whether it's out of a sense of devotion to the state and, and a way of punishing those of us who are, you know, disrupting the narrative, because we do not accept what we've been told and for very good reason, they have systematically uh, uh, dissected us in the judicial process by violating their own protocols in order to reach what I was told by the Sandy participants were predetermined conclusions. They told me through Steve that in every case, the judicial hearings had predetermined conclusions, Sean. Predetermined conclusions, absolutely. That's exactly what happened to Alex Jones. The judge literally told the jury, your job is not to find this man guilty or innocent. The court has already found him guilty. Your job is to determine how much money he owes. I mean, that's how kangaroo courtish the nature of our judiciary has become. And let me ask you this. The smith Month Act completely reworked in 2012. Now, refresh my memory. Didn't the Sandy event take place on, what was it, December 13th, 14th? 2012, yeah. right? Okay. Well, yeah. the smith Munt Act, because it was rewritten under Obama, allows the government to lie to the people domestically. They can use propaganda domestically, which to me brings this whole story full circle. Okay? People say, why? Why would this happen? Why would the government do this? Why would there be deep state operations like this? Well, what do they hate more than our free speech? They hate our gun rights. They despise the Second Amendment. So Sophia Smallstorm has concluded, as have you, that this was a mass casualty drill exercise to help propagandize domestically that guns are bad. And if we simply outlaw guns, then children dot, 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 safe. Sean, I, I think that's exactly right. But they suppress relevant evidence. Americans use guns to defend themselves from assaults millions of times every year, saving an estimated 200,000 innocent lives per annum. Now you compare that with uh, deaths from gun violence somewhere around, say, 75, 80,000 a year, more than half of which are from suicide. Okay. And you're talking about taking guns away from Americans to defend themselves. That's going to increase the number of gun deaths minimally by 200,000 a year, which is like five times the number who currently died mostly from gang shootings because the overwhelming majority of gun deaths are from black gang members shooting other black gang members. So uh, Randy's book was a PSYOP so they can take our guns. This dude had evidence that the photos, there was no bodies anywhere. Can I just say something about him real and, quick? Yeah. Some of this my least... Like, some of my least favorite people in the world are people who go like this. So I was going to the store, and when I went there, <laughs> get to the fucking point, bro. You could have saved us yeah. five minutes. You could have saved us five minutes just in that video if you just said the words correctly. You don't need to elongate certain ones just to make your point. We get it. Say the fucking words. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. 
And this this is another reason why I think he's controlled opposition because I think he was made to talk about Randy's book. Yeah. And get convicted for how many millions of dollars? Five million. And to scare regular people from talking about it. Ah, okay. Okay. Don't make... talk about what Alex Jones thinks because you're going to be paying us millions of dollars. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. That math is mathing. Yeah. My math usually maths. Um, so... <laughs> Okay. So, yeah, I think he's 100% control, controlled opposition. That's why when you bring him up, mm-hmm. I like I like roll my eyes and Here's the thing though, blah, right? Blah, blah. But when when we bring him up, right? Um like I think I heard somebody else doing math on his um conspiracy theories and he's like 95% those conspiracy theories turn out to be true later. So when yeah. I bring him up, I don't bring him up because, you know, he's a conspiracy. I bring him up because he he's, talks about real shit. He's he's great at predicting the future. But that's what Eric Dubay also said. He said he's he's on about ninety percent of the time, and then yeah. the other ten percent he leads you down to nothing, right? Or leads you leads you to believe. Like I know you don't think. I think I, I'm not in the lizard thing. I I've, I've I've gone down the hole. I can't I can't find. I'm not in it either. But, but I think it's a possibility. Oh no, a- anything's possible. But anything's possible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and if you look at but, Hillary Clinton, you can see some you, lizard behind those eyes, buddy. Oh yeah, but She's if you the, go to her and the Queen, um, if you go to any normal regular person who's not awake and say the government's lizards, they're not gonna think that shit's crazy as fuck. Right, right. Yeah, I get it. I think that's. I think the government's lizard people is crazier. Well, I of course think this, but if I was a regular person, I also think that if someone said the government's lizards or the earth is level and flat. I would 100% the lizard thing is way crazier, but I, I know the earth is level and stationary. So of course I think that, but lizard people just seems fucking bad shit to me. And I, I have looked into it. Maybe I should look into it again and we could do an episode on it whether I believe it or not. Um, and get the evidence that I've seen on why I don't think it's real. I can do that. Um, but yeah, I think that's what David Ike and that's what Alex Jones are there to do to make us think that put some crazy out there. Analysts are fucking nuts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. I can see that. Yeah, the things they try to cover up are the things that are real, and that what they said in the beginning of the episode. Dude, one thousand percent, one thousand percent. It's a, it's an issue. Yeah. That's all I got. <laughs> What uh, do you think about Alex Jones out there, world? Comment below. Like, yeah, let share, us know. Subscribe. Do you like Alex Jones? Do you like his? You know, he he goes on a lot of public or like um, not public, but he goes on a lot of or used to anyways a lot of uh, podcasts that were pretty big. Like he's been on um, he's been on Joe Rogan a bunch. Obviously, he's been on uh, yeah. the one with Andrew Schultz a bunch. Um, so he he goes on people's podcasts and talks about his theories and it's funny they the some of those podcasts get taken down off of youtube so they have to put up the disclaimer just like you did on the uh on the gamestop one saying hey these are this is theatrics this is these aren't real thoughts blah 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 you know but so they can leave their episode up yeah entertainment purposes only yes so yeah yeah so that's why i don't trust him and uh i think he is bill hicks okay um but I don't know. I, I'm not saying he's not. There is definitely a possibility. There's a lot of similarities there. And the one thing I like about Alex Jones the most is he doesn't elongate certain words just to make his point. You want to know one of the reasons, even if I didn't think it was controlled opposition, why I hate Alex Jones? Yeah, tell me. It's because he fucking freaks out and yells fucking constantly. Constantly. <gasps> I'm not at a Sam Kennison fucking comedy show. I don't right. need to yell in my fucking face about everything. There's a clip of him um, after 9-11 of him going, Oh, the beast is risen. Oh, yeah. Crying. And then he's like, oh, play us out. I got I to gotta get control of myself. Oh. 
It's the like what the fuck, dude? Oh, the other the other part where I think he could be uh, it falls in line with your belief, uh, psyop. Um, dude, he has video of uh, Bohemian Grove. He he snuck oh, yeah. snuck into Bohemian Grove and got video. Yeah, How, I mean, and I've yeah. seen a lot of YouTube. Like, there's YouTubers who do sneak into Bohemian Grove, but not during uh, the ritual. The rituals, like it's yeah. everything's dark. Uh, it's the middle of the night. Security usually catches them, or you know, so yeah. There is a video of uh, I I I'll try to find it. I don't know if I'll be able to, but the guy's like going around the town of Bohemian Grove, talking to the locals. The locals are like, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, he's a young it. white kid, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does a lot of offbeat reporting on certain things. Yeah. Yeah. Shit sucks. <laughs> yep, I saw it. For sure. For sure. For and sure. next week, we're going to take off from that last video, and we're going to talk about guns. <laughs> you got fucking two weeks to get this shit ready. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the... Best episode you've ever seen. That's a all lie. right. That's a lie. It's gonna, gonna be terrible. Oh, well. Whoa, I'm so nervous. Well, don't put that negative shit on our show, bud. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Why? I don't know. It's not my thing, man. Great. But it'll be, it's I'll, be great. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna I'll... add some spice to it, like the last video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for the edit. <laughs> I, I hope you can make it good. <laughs> I, 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 a lot of beliefs. <laughs> Oh shit! All right, buds. Well, uh, I think that's a uh, net. That's a that's a that's that's, that's, that's a uh, that, that's a sewed. The cookie has crumbled. Oh, I love crumble cookies. We haven't talked about food in a while. I do love crumble cookies. We didn't talk about food all episode. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Don't eat the homies. <laughs> Joe Guy. Godspeed. Godspeed, homie. Like, share, subscribe. Bye bye. Yo, do that. You've reached the offices of the Godspeed podcast. We are currently closed. Please leave your information and someone will return your call within 24 business days. Thank you. Hi, I- I'm calling. Okay, the, that, uh, the whole thing, whole episode. Alex Jones, that Jones guy, I have a theory myself on him. Okay, he's a fucking bird, man. He's a government spy. I'm telling you. They say he's a fucking pigeon. He's like one of those pigeons spying you over, over those underpasses. Those aren't fucking real. Those are fucking real. It's fucking Alex Jones himself. I'm telling you. All right? But, like, he's not real. He works for the government. Why, honestly, would you think that anything that he says is real? He, he's not credible. He's a fucking bird. Ruffle his feathers, man. He's a bird.